So now we're going to keep that momentum going a little bit here about Batman versus Superman and Man of Steel. And something I wanted to bring up, because I kind of heard this recently about these movies, and I was wondering uh, to Shane and to the world, or whatever, our little demographic that we listens to us here, <laughs> our world, do you think that Batman versus Superman and Dawn of Justice and Man of Steel will eventually become those cult classics, those movies we always hear about where those movies at first glance did not get received very well by critics or by the public at first Will later on will will they later on become that cult classic? Will they be part of that little library of movies that are like oh way better than people realized at the time? I think we're already getting to that point. J- just based on a lot of our followers on on Instagram, especially when you start seeing a lot of uh, people commenting, oh, what was your favorite DC e- EU movie? Man of Steel, Batman v Superman. You know there, and obviously there's not a whole lot. Well, actually, actually I think- it was DC. Yeah, yeah, it not DCEU. It was just yeah. DC flat out. And then we have one person comment Batman forever. But, uh, but, Hong th- Kong, <laughs> we is on the bus go round and round, round and round. Special motherfucker. <laughs> so I, uh, I, I think we're already starting to see that. And we brought up in the last episode. I think it was the last episode the yes uh, all, all the the rotten cl- tomatoes yeah the rotten tomatoes or the the initial critic reaction to certain films that that now are are incredibly well received and i i think these are an example of of one of them i i do feel like warner brothers uh, hopefully has learned and will stop shooting themselves in the foot when it comes to releasing trailers cutting the movie because that was one of the biggest things, which we've talked about a thousand times, is the trailers that gave away too much and cutting away the ultimate cut down to the theatrical version. Because the ultimate cut is so much better, so much more fulfilling. There's so much story and depth in the, in that version. But I I feel like we've we've already we're already starting to get to that point, and I I think as time. Uh, carries on and people rewatch these movies and you know and and it, maybe once the whole dceu is built out even further then people will will learn to really appreciate these ones even more one of the examples i wanted to bring up was 1982 the thing john carpenter's the thing it came out and i believe today is considered to be a very good movie and even on rotten tomatoes they have a high rating i didn't look it up i don't care about rotten tomatoes that much <laughs> uh they it's it's high, it's rated highly now but at the time it was panned it was panned hard by critics very well known by names not an aggregate system right. back then you <laughs> yeah. know cuz back then we actually had names and reviews right. to, you yeah. know incorporated with to movies follow. Yeah. not a fucking shitty percentage <laughs> Yeah, and you know, I have some reviews that were brought up during the time. The the magazine Cine Fantastic Geek or whatever the hell it was. We talked about this last time. I couldn't figure out how to say this name. Whatever. <laughs> Ran a, a cover which asked, "Is this the most hated movie of all time?" Talking about John Carpenter's The Thing from 1982. Not Batman vs. <laughs> no. <laughs> Also, uh, in science fiction magazine, Starlong, yeah, Starlong, Starlong critic Alan Spencer wrote, John Carpenter's The Thing smells and smells pretty bad. 1983 shit talk right there. <laughs> 82. <Right. laughs> oh, damn, got him. <laughs> and even Roger Niebuhr was quoted calling it a garbage or a uh, vomit bag garbage fire or some shit right. like that. <laughs> so it, it's definitely a th- thing that happens in our history since movies have been out and things in general you know Mm -hmm. uh, books movies stuff like that uh they eventually build up this appreciation that wasn't at the time there for them and i really feel like i really feel like because i think with man of steel it's slowly starting to come out now and i don't know some people use the excuses because batman versus superman is so bad that people like Man of Steel more, <laughs> where Suicide Squad was so bad, right. that Man of Steel becomes more appreciated now. Uh, but I feel like Man of Steel at least is getting up there. Yeah, it's starting to become that movie that people realize is probably one of the best origin movies that we have yeah. right now, out of superhero movies. I mean, there's there's some others out there that are really good, but I mean, Man of Steel easily top five. Yeah, easily oh, yeah, top sure. five. Um, I I would maybe even go a little bit lower, but. It's definitely there, and I think BVS is slowly, as the ultimate cut gets put out there more and more, and the talk, like us, right. keeps going. Even in 2017, we're still talking about the movie, the ultimate cut. Right. What does it mean? Is it how much better it is than the theatrical cut? Right. I think, 
I would say in 10 years, these movies, depending on how the DCEU goes, these movies might be truly appreciated later on, especially when comic book movies become shitty. Because <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. in like 10 years they're going to be all dried up. And, uh, right, yeah. That yeah. well will be completely <laughs> completely soaked up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I, I think in, in 10 years, maybe even in five, but we'll start to see because by that point, you know, Infinity Wars will probably be done. Who knows where Marvel's going to be? DC EU may actually have uh, you know a good amount of movies behind them at that point. And I think once you go to the to the beginning, people are already talking about. Uh, I use this in our Wonder Woman review with Jeremy Johns, where he said, "You know what? That's, this actually makes me want to go back and watch." Bat- Batman v Superman because of of Wonder Woman and then if right. you continue to tie certain things together uh, a lot of people have now started talking more about the Flashpoint Paradox and what that dream sequence meant uh, you know in Batman v Superman right. so I, I think Z- Zack Snyder deserves a lot more credit than than he's gotten as far as how much he's thought out and the look at the picture is a good example. The picture that that Wonder Woman is shoot is trying to find. They had already casted everyone. They already knew that this picture was going to be at at least in some point in Wonder Woman, and it's the exact same people. And you know they they snap the shot, and then it's in the Wonder Woman movie. So they they already have certain things that are planned out, and it's going to be intriguing and interesting to see. And that's redundant, but <laughs> to see where where they go from here. That means and, you're just double interesting, <laughs> right? And how. How, how they tie it all in so hopefully as as it progresses right and you know then these will be a lot more appreciated yeah and now we're going to get into a little bit more of the aftermath of wonder woman we've had our wonder woman spoiler review last week but now we're going to go into a couple more things and talk about uh some of the things that we didn't necessarily talk about last time from wonder woman the easter eggs some of the aftermath the reviews that have come out now that has got has had there's been a week it's time so we're going to talk about those things so i i kind of wanted to start off with a lot of the the complaints or the uh, critiques that i heard as far as uh, wonder woman the movie in general and then there's another thing, uh, a an article that came out from Collider yeah. about Wonder Woman and and Superman in the DCEU. Uh, so one, uh, just a couple of things that I don't think I got to talk over with our Wonder Woman review. People were complaining that there wasn't enough time for Themyscira or on uh, Themyscira, and that to me was was kind of shocking because you knew at some point, as cool as it was, and how bright and beautiful it was. Yeah, at some point you have to get to the world. You ha- the the story has to improve. Nuh uh. <laughs> yeah. Stay on the island with all the hot bitches. Right, yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why they wanted to stay there. Uh then people were saying that it's too dark when she came to our world. And to me That was the fucking point. Right. You to have- show how bright Thank and you. <laughs> beautiful Themyscira was compared to the shitty gray. Right landscape of fucking england of the real world yeah <laughs> welcome to the real world fuckers yeah yeah exactly and i like Unless how they- i live in hawaii <laughs> <laughs> i like how they stuck to a lot of the same coloration and the tones that Zack snyder has already set i don't know if, if he had any dealings with that i know you know he was a part of the the script the storyline he, he you know he wrote- he had a writer's credit yeah he was one of the three writers on Bro- this. yeah so i i don't know how far he went and as, producer uh, yeah a lot of people say that he only did the the final battle and and it was clear that that's all he he touched on and and thank god he didn't do anything else but we don't know that for sure so fuck off to all you no people. there's plenty of articles out there if you actually read it he was one of the first writers on it I don't think you write the end of the movie yeah, first. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I thought I read that, but then I a lot of the stuff that I'm seeing, mainly on social media, on actually some articles, people were talking about, no. There's a it, lot of Patty Jenkins did. quotes out there. She talks about it. Because I think it was, a believe, I believe it was an interview with Collider where they were asking her, and she talks about originally uh, Snack Snyder was on, and then another guy came in, and then one last guy came in and finished the script. And that's kind of what penciled it out right there. So it's technically three writers credited all coming in at separate times. I wonder if the last guy is the one who fucked up the <laughs> the, the ending and 100 years ago I gave up on humanity or whatever the, the fuck. <laughs> but <laughs> what, One other thing I wanted to talk about that I didn't quite get to make fun of last time. Because, hey, you know, we nitpick movies sometimes. But I did want to laugh. For all our Dragon Ball Z fans out there, <laughs> I just wanted to point out one thing. Did anybody else think that she went super saiyan when she got when she was tied up by the tank track 
And then mysteriously, her companion gets blown up in the air. Oh, yeah, by the way, spoilers. Um, <laughs> she gets, <laughs> gets blown up in the air, and she just gets pissed off, and a huge golden aura just blows up around her. And she just goes on an ass-whooping spree from there. It just totally reminded me of Dragon Ball Z. It even looked like a Dragon Ball Z fight, kind of. Right. <laughs> and it just made me laugh. To me, it, it made a lot more sense after you said that. Not that it didn't make sense to begin with, but people hated the fact that she, using a wrestling term, hulked up. And when all of a sudden, now she can... Oh, she went super Saiyan, right. assholes. Yeah. <laughs> or super Amazon. <laughs> yeah. God damn it. So, she uh, tapped into that power, motherfuckers. Yeah. That's what it does. Watch an anime, fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know about anime. One other thing I wanted to point out was also, Zach, since they don't think Zack Snyder was very, uh, wasn't a part of this movie very much, he also had a quote talking about the success of Wonder Woman and what made Wonder Woman different than the other characters we've seen in the DCEU, meaning pretty much Batman and Superman, because no one gives a shit about Suicide Squad. <laughs> <laughs> Not even fucking Zack Snyder. <laughs> Not even Will Smith. <laughs> Zack Snyder quoted saying, she offers a unique opportunity to speak to what it is to be strong, powerful, independent woman it's a glance that's necessary in the world as well as the way that we represent heroes on screen having that equal representation of male and female energy is really important to me i love that there's a purity to wonder woman she doesn't have a broken past she's not seeking revenge on people that wronged her she just can be a hero and I think that perfectly sums up what we've been talking about, the philosophy of Batman versus Superman. Oh, yeah. And what we're about to talk about with a Collider article. <laughs> uh, it, it, it makes so much sense. And that's what I mean. It feels like this world has been planned. You're going to have Wonder Woman as this pure individual put that, who is now, at, during her, this movie, she's pure. But now, at the end of by Batman versus Superman, she was tainted by whatever happened in the world. I don't know. They didn't quite explain that in Wonder Woman, as you pointed out. <laughs> But now she's got conviction back again. She's got that wanting to be a hero yeah, again. A part of something. She, and... Yeah, she's already having her redeeming story being told throughout for Justice League and so mm -hmm. forth from here. So I just love this quote. It just it makes it feel like this was all planned. This this was set up, and without the pecker nuts at Warner Brothers ruining <laughs> ruining half the movies he's done, I fuck yeah. I mean, between Watchmen, this fuck dude, they just yeah. I the more that we're talking about it, the more that I just correlate it with the Fountainhead and him, Zack Snyder, because I I feel like once his vision starts to be pulled together, then There's sabotage. Well, hopefully Warner Brothers doesn't <laughs> isn't sabotaging, but I I feel like the people will start to appreciate and go, oh shit, damn he, you know he kind of had he thought a lot of this out, and that was one of my my biggest worries with Jeff Johns when when he stepped in, as I was like, I hope that Zack Snyder still has um a a hand in each of these movies. I want to say he had some sort of hand in Suicide Squad. I know he was a producer because okay. cause he's in charge of the Batman character for at the time. Okay. And because right. Batman was in the movie, he had to uh, be part of, be a producer. Sound like the best parts of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, exhibit A. <laughs> but, if the glove does not fit, you must quit. <laughs> Why would a Wookiee, an eight foot tall Wookiee, want to live on Endor with a bunch of two foot tall Ewoks? That does not make sense. But more importantly, you have to ask yourself, what does this have to do with this case? Nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, it has nothing to do with this case. It does not make sense. If Chewbacca lives on Endor, you must acquit. <laughs> All right. Damn straight. <laughs> Drink your orange juice, kids. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So, <laughs> dude. So, no. And so with other things in the Wonder Woman world, we're going to talk a little bit about the state of the DCU after Wonder Woman here. Uh, Shane has an article he wants to talk about that Collider was uh, Collider did about five days ago uh, about Wonder Woman being the Superman that the DCEU needs. Take it away, Shane. Have fun. Yeah. <laughs> oh, relaxing for you. Okay. So I, I'm not going to really read this entire article. You can yourself. It's on Collider.com. We, we plug them a lot for how much we oppose a lot of their, their beliefs. But uh, the title of the article is called Why Wonder Woman is a Superman the DCEU Needed. And basically, it goes on to compare Wonder Woman to, to kind of a Christopher Reeve-esque Superman and how Superman should have been built the same way as, as Wonder Woman. The Collider are not the only people. They just did a, a great job putting it into an article. 
Uh, I I was seeing a lot of people just on social media, on YouTube videos, that they were saying this is exactly how Superman should have been have been portrayed Boring. in the DCEU. Thank you. I as I've said this a couple times on previous episodes. As much as I love Christopher Reeve's take on Superman and Dean Cain's and and uh, Brandon Rouse and and everyone's leading up to this point, you need something else. And people shit on on Superman Returns because ah, uh, you know, it's he's just this godlike character that no one can relate to. And Zack Snyder finally took a version of or yeah, took an, an approach to have a version of Superman that is more relatable, that has flaws, that's trying to figure himself out, that isn't fucking boring. And and, and I'm sorry, you can Wonder Woman worked because she had this naive right. innocence to her. Right. She only saw the world in black and white. That you stop Ares. You stop the war. You stop the war. That's it. That's that's all I have to do. This is how things are. She's brought up a certain way. Uh, you know, in um, Themyscira. Uh, Themyscira. She's very innocent. Yeah. And I'm sorry. I don't want my Superman to be like that. I I want him to have flaws. And it it worked. And that's great that that they have this character now. And she can be that person, and she's is also kind of second guessing the world a little bit as well, because the world is shitty and full of a bunch of crap. <laughs> right, and that's how yeah. she ends up in Batman versus Superman. Right. Is she like that? Is she this great hero that the DCEU needed in Batman versus Superman? No, she's been tainted by the world right. now. Yep. So she's realistic. Yes. She's been brought down after a hundred years of human atrocities. Yeah. Atrocities. That's what she says. So, but just because there's one movie where she's full of light because she's so innocent, so yeah. naive. Yeah. Wh which makes for a great character. It makes a one-time movie. Right. Yep. That and doesn't build a universe. No. No. And and it, it makes it... We, you know, <laughs> we applauded Patty Jenkins and what, what she did with, oh, yeah, with it worked. What Wonder Woman. That one story worked. Yeah, yeah. It, but it is very linear that she doesn't yeah. have, she's not trying to do all these different things. It's, this is what you do. And, and after thinking about it, I would agree. And maybe it's cause I'm a man, but Chris Pine has a little bit more, not a little bit. He has more of a relatable story and, and more of a development because I think even to him, the world is is shitty, and and he he realizes it even more, and maybe he's a part of that. But I think he also realizes the good that Wonder Woman has shown, and I think that's what Superman is trying to show. Right it is in in Man of Steel and yeah. Batman v Superman is that he is trying to show that no matter what you you keep going, and and that's you're bringing hope. You will stumble, you will fall, <laughs> right. but they will find you in the light. It's, yes, it's all there. It's black and white. It's clear yeah. as fuck. <laughs> it's said so many times and i don't understand how people are just like i get it wonder woman was a good movie it was it was a really good movie it's a great addition to the dcu but really it's a one-timer yeah and it doesn't happen again and in the time period it was set in was set in a time where it's a war so things weird things like this can happen you don't have to worry about the repercussions necessarily of your mm -hmm. actions because there is a war going on but when you're in a war where 24 7 news fucking all everybody has a camera in their pocket mm -hmm. you know everybody has an opinion now because oh, yeah. everybody has internet it makes being a hero complicated yes and 1918 it's not that hard to be a hero <laughs> right yeah it's it's very well especially like we said for for someone like wonder woman and i'm i'm interested to see where her character goes in the future, in Justice League, in all the future installments in the DCEU, I'm interested to see her take on, on the world. And But we're starting to build why these characters are the way that they are. And I also like, the just to jump a little sidetrack thing, the way that Batman has been has been portrayed. Because he, I feel that he is is along kind of the same lines he's he's weathered he's beaten he the world is shitty and what am i doing and then he tries to fight superman who's this godlike person and he realizes you know what superman uh, it was not the enemy i failed him in life or <laughs> i failed him in life i failed him in death i won't fail him again or whatever the fuck he says whatever the quote is <laughs> i failed him in life but i won't fail him fail him in death okay so i did have it right yeah. the first time and then i started second guessing myself but uh i i feel like all these heroes are coming together they're overcoming and it's it's what's making them so intriguing and makes you want to to follow along and you can relate to them and it's awesome
Thank you, Zack Snyder. I hope that that this continues. Or he, the creative forces in general. David yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. Uh, even, even Jeff Johns. Uh, one thing I did want to bring up real quick that he posted yesterday because they said, uh, I can't remember who it was, Hollywood Heroes or something like that, dot com. It's on our Instagram page, but I'm not going to look it up. Uh, they posted five best things that Superman has done, I believe, in the DCEU. And Jeff Johns uh, retweeted it and said, get ready to revise your list. And he's basically showing, hey, you know, there's he did a lot of great things, but we have a, there's still a lot a lot to come. And I kind of made the joke of, well, I, he must be talking flashbacks because Superman's dead. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it just, it you know, gets you pumped for, for the future. And, and, you know, like you said, yeah, uh, Zack Snyder has started this off so well but uh, all the creative forces and how everything is starting to come together i hope they they do move forward with the suicide squad too i, I would like the, them to get a little bit bit of redemption i feel like that was a complete that movie is there is the the right movie is out there that was that's left on the cutting room floor and and um, unfortunately we ended up with what we ended up with so it'd be nice if they can get a little redemption on that yeah piece of shit all right <laughs> We're gonna t- uh, just to, you know, again, spoilers about Wonder Woman. We're going to talk about some of the Easter eggs in Wonder Woman that came up. We weren't able to talk about Easter eggs before because we we're already running long on our podcast. So we had to skip over Easter eggs. <laughs> yeah, and shit we skipped like over a lot on our last podcast. Yeah, because there was so much to talk about. And that's how much there is to talk about. <laughs> some shit like that. Yeah, well, well put. Yeah, very well put. I used all brain power for the scripto. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a bullet, uh, bullet homage in the ho- in the uh, alleyway, and that's one of them right there. And they're talking about that's an homage to the Superman one. Yeah, Superman yes. one with Christopher Reeves, where he catches the bullet in the alleyway when they're getting robbed. Yeah, and this is something very similar. She deflects the bullet somewhat similar yeah yeah it the only difference is lois doesn't realize who he is he just catches it kind of like falls down and then when he's like oh i'm good i must have fainted and she's like what you fainted and then she's like kind of uh you know annoyed at him or whatever and then he he's Pussy. <laughs> yeah and then it, then he shows the bullet in, in his hands you know and the cool part was uh wonder woman was actually wearing a similar attire you know she had the glasses she was wearing the hat which, was which he one, was yeah. Yeah. uh to to christopher reeve so I, I thought that was pretty cool and and i think that was their attempt to kind of show like hey she is a lot like this version of superman right. you know which is which is cool and then there's the a couple i'm sure you guys could find this there's a couple screenshots of her deflecting bullets she's got her arm uh folded up kind of in a little bit of a flexing pose like the uh Rosie the Riveter, uh, just like the Rosie the Riveter picture from the old uh, World War II propaganda uh, posters and stuff like that right. for women, you know, helping out during the war. I times. didn't even notice that. And then there's the uh, the the ice cream part, which I did realize this when I watched it because it reminded me a lot of Justice League War when she gets tries the ice cream and she tastes it and she's like, oh my god, this is so great about the ice cream, and she's like, you should be so proud. It's just like in the New Fifty Two of Wonder Woman, her new origins in the new 52 so they just have that little homage right there to the ice cream snacks zach snyder cameoed in here yeah and i knew about the cameo before watching the movie and i still couldn't find it i later found out why i couldn't find it because it was like he's way in the background <laughs> yeah no yeah he didn't even i was like what the fuck I'm like if <laughs> you're gonna have like, him be in there at least get him a little closer yeah, I know. like what are we all supposed seriously. to jump up to the fucking screen seriously the like, theater? Who, that must have been like warner brothers or zach snyder or someone who who put that out was like hey i'm in the movie <laughs> you yeah because uh, you'll see it 500 times to try to find yeah. Yeah, it's hard, really hard to it's see. Like, where's Dickhead? All right. <laughs> Next, uh, Chris Pines, uh, Steve Trevor refers to Themyscira as Paradise Island, which it was originally called. Yeah, uh, they originally that. In, in some of the uh, in the remakes of Wonder Woman, they started calling it Themyscira. So, but it used to be called Paradise Island. <laughs> And that's it. <laughs> and that's all we're going to have on Easter eggs because the rest of them were all pretty stupid. And I will edit out the really long pause that just happened right now. The awkward but trust silence. Me, but trust me, it was there. Yeah. <laughs> it was there. Because some of them, one we already talked about with a flashback of Man of Steel, and then there was something about a lightning attack, and end with a boom. Okay, cool. So <laughs> that concludes our Easter egg talk about Wonder Woman. And that concludes our whole conversation about the DCEU. Breathe. Yes. Wow. 
exciting stuff. Can't wait to see what the future holds. Hopefully Justice League fulfills that ultimate feeling I have for these movies. Yeah. Hopefully it concludes in a way. I've heard some possible spoilers. I'm not going to talk about them at all here. Uh, some kind of leaks and stuff like that. If that is the way they're going to go, I don't quite like that that much. But uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I I would say to everyone, tread lightly. There is a... On Facebook, there's not very intelligent pages that I follow, apparently, because... People have been pushing out this fake image of Superman confronting the Justice League. Have you seen this? No. Uh, so basically, it's on um, Helicarrier, and I believe, and you see the Justice League and you see Superman in front of them, like kind of confronting them. It's Wait, clear. Helicarrier is from Marvel. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Yes, they are. <laughs> it's on a big ass wow. plane. Fuck. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> we got some mingling in our yeah. <laughs> what? Wow, cinematic. helicarrier. Yeah, Nick Fury comes out and he's like, I'm here for the Justice League initiative, and he throws the papers down. <laughs> <laughs> the Justice League. <laughs> what are what are like the big ass planes that I don't know. Anyway. Like a flying fortress type plane? Yeah. Anyway, Spruce Goose. That they're they're on, they're in. <laughs> what? No, you don't know the Spruce. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, anyways, they're in they're inside this this giant plane basically, and they're and they're standing there. Superman's out the back of it, and he's he's confronting them. Superman is clearly from the promo image of Batman v Superman, and the Justice League is clearly from the Justice League trailer, and they're just in not a helicarrier, but in some sort of plane. So uh, don't don't pay attention. Even some some actually uh, pretty solid websites have been pushing this out as it's real, and it's not. There, there's it, it. You can. It's clear as day. It is not real. It maybe have been uh, photoshopped a lot better than the Black Panther poster. Oh fuck! <laughs> but but it's not real. So don't pay attention to, it's to a rumors. Me, Mario Paint. <laughs> yeah. Pretty bad. An SNES. You know what Mario Paint is. <laughs> It's that thing you couldn't control with a controller. Yeah, yeah. You gotta have a shitty annoying. mouse and you're trying to do it. I have the mouse and it doesn't work either. Oh, oh shit. See? <laughs> Fuck you, Nintendo. <laughs> yeah. Making me think I could draw <laughs> on a it's game console. It's all fake. <laughs> fake news. All right. That concludes this episode. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube page, at Comic Movie Marks. We're... We're going to give it a crack. We've been putting some stuff up. Yeah. We're going to we're going to try our best to keep putting things up. We have some in the can that I, I need to get out there a little bit. We've I put a lot of focus into this episode, so yeah. shit kind of fell behind, right. but uh right. we have have a lot in the can. We're slowly going to start pumping more out. I so. went through YouTube's shitty ass editing of music process with our Thor Ragnarok breakdown. I can go into it and remove the song and then it'll play the clip just fine without copyright. And guess what? The song still plays, but now it's not copyright. So that's their editing. Apparently, it just masks it or something. <laughs> wow. I don't know. For the most part, from what I could tell, it's just not as loud as it was. Wow. That's it's crazy. It's the same fucking thing, but now it's not copyrighted. Unbelievable. Well, thanks, Fuck. thanks, YouTube editor, I guess. <laughs> stupid as fucking... Listen to it. Just yeah, listen. I will. I it's did not so know that. stupid. It, I mean, it cuts out a little bit, and it's a lot lower, but it basically still plays the fucking song, from what wow. I could tell. Well, that's good, I guess. And it's back. <laughs> yeah. It went up to thir from 33 to 34 as soon as it came back. That's probably me clicking on it to probably. try to fix it. <laughs> like, what is this? <laughs> yeah, that was about YouTube. Make sure you check out our podcast, at Comic Movie Marks, on iTunes. I see you, iTunes people. Yes. Stop start, it. Start, starting right. to come. <laughs> all right. I just looked at the statistics for Wonder Woman, all right? You are... Heavily, iOS users now are our main <laughs> random downloads. iOS too. For some reason, we keep changing people. First it was Android, then it was Macintosh. <laughs> Good and, old Macintosh. And uh, Macintosh. That reminds me of a uh, blank check. Yeah, you remember that movie? <laughs> yeah, Mr. Macintosh. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Macintosh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you just like blew a bunch of kids' minds. <laughs> I know. It was on Netflix, so maybe they watched it. Yeah, I watched it with this, my kids. <laughs> yeah, this kid steals. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and I got my ass whooped for that. <laughs> Took a dad's blank check. I did not get rich at all. Whoa, you did? And then I was like, I wrote $10 on it. Because <laughs> I'm a genius. Right. <laughs> and took it to the movie store, probably. <laughs> no, I didn't even make it. Oh, okay. Got <laughs> murdered. <laughs> oh, man, that's fantastic. 
Stupid movie. <laughs> Taught me bad things. I know. Stupid playing <laughs> check. Don't just, don't steal ten dollars from my dad. <laughs> just go steal cash. It's a lot easier than probably taking the check. <laughs> or don't steal at all. Good point. Good point. Do that, kids. Like clothes in Man of Steel. That still gets me every time. <laughs> Fucker. That was my lucky socks. <laughs> uh, be sure to check us out on social media. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We are at Comic Movie Marks. We're starting to gain some followers. Getting random likes and laugh faces on Facebook. So that's kind of cool. People aren't commenting, though. Dude, the one chick on Facebook that most recently likes us. Fucking A, I could not pronounce her name in my life, depending oh, on Oh, I know. Sounds yeah. like a fucking uh, Chinese <laughs> restaurant name. Like Dong Wing Ping Chong. Yeah. But we appreciate the Oh, the yeah, no, we appreciate it all, but <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. But holy shit. <laughs> Can uh, I buy a vowel, please? <laughs> <laughs> fucking A. Yeah, I'm uh, starting to get a lot more interaction on, on Instagram, too, which is which has yeah, been awesome. Even for the dumbest things. Yeah. So, so thank you. We appreciate it. I love Instagram's new little feature now. They tell you how shitty your posts are. I haven't noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll tell you, like, if one actually is doing well, this one's doing 95% better than your other posts. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. Well, Promote thank it. you for telling me. <laughs> Pay money, yeah. 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 One thing I want to figure out, which it, maybe someone can comment or send us an email and let us know how, how pages do this, but certain pages have been able to, on their their live thing or, or whatever, when they're actually recording a video of them, you can swipe up and it'll have a link, and I'd like to, to start doing that. So that you can, it can be more easily accessible for all of you out there. So if you know how they do that, please let us know. That's what we're all about, being easy. Yes. <laughs> Just ask our wives and girlfriends. Yes, ask them. <laughs> please do. Make sure you email them at Comic Movie Marks <laughs> about those questions. Yes, any questions. In case I don't see you. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night.